fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Paul wrote to Timothy, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and the profane and for murderers and fathers and, and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured, uh, perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Perished in the lake burning with fire, Gehenna. Revelation 19.20, the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought the miracles before him, which deceived those that received the mark of the beast, and those that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20.10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20.14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Him that overcometh will inherit all things. He will be their God, they will be his son. But the fearful and the unbelieving, what a destiny. Verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. And he talked to me, saying, Come hither, and I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And so, in Revelation 15, 1, we are told about these seven angels uh, having the seven last plagues, for they complete the judgment, the wrath of God upon the earth. And uh, Isaiah 62, 5 says, For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. So the seven angels saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It's interesting, there are those instances in the scripture where people were taken by the spirit in sort of an astral projection. And uh, in Ezekiel chapter 11, he said, moreover the spirit lifted me up and he brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, which looks toward the east. Now, Ezekiel was in Babylon, but he was brought by the Spirit back to Jerusalem, to the east gate of the temple. We remember the story of Philip, who went down to Gaza, where he met this Ethiopian eunuch uh, in the chariot, and uh, he witnessed to him, baptized him, and we read when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Uh, but the, the phrase, the Spirit caught him away. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said, I knew a man in Christ over 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. So Paul was taken on into the third heaven. He doesn't know if he was really dead or alive, but he just knows, he said, God knows that, but he was there, he heard things that would, he said, be unlawful to try and describe. Revelation 17, three, John said, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness 
And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet color beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And so uh, here in verse 10, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So the jasper is an opaque, impure variety of quartz, usually red or yellow in color, and it can be highly polished. And so he sees uh, the, the light of this city, the New Jerusalem, uh, like a most precious stone, even like jasper stone, clear as crystal. And it had a wall, great and high, the new heaven, the dwelling place of the bride of Christ. Now there are those that say, well, the, the New Jerusalem is the bride. Oh, the Lord didn't marry a city. He married to the people in the city. Uh, this is where the, the inhabitants of the city. And so he's describing heaven now. And it's interesting. Uh, God, in preparing the earth for man, prepared a beautiful botanical garden. It is interesting that it is said of Satan, you have been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was your covering. And it tells the different stones uh, there in Ezekiel. And uh, the, the interesting thing is that it was a gem kind of a garden. And of course, when we think of uh, gems and the beauty of gems, uh, of course, we, we think of our gardens with the beautiful flowers. And it is an, it, isn't it interesting, and I marvel at this, God didn't have to make flowers so beautiful. He didn't have to make them so colorful. Why did he do that? I'm sure just so we could thoroughly enjoy them. Gave them a wonderful aroma. And so you put your nose into a big red rose and just take a deep breath and say, ooh, that's beautiful. So we can enjoy. Now, some people make a mistake, a, a serious mistake. They put their nose into that beautiful rose and they smell it and they say, oh, that's God. No, that's not God, stupid. That's, that's the creation of God. As Paul said, they worship and serve the creature more than the creator. If you stop short and worship the creation, you're missing out. You've missed it. We're not to worship the creation, we're to worship the creator. And these are to lead us to the worship of God, the creator. And so uh, here is the new heaven, and it seems like it will be a gem heaven. And, and so he, he describes uh, the various uh, stones and so forth. Um, actually, the wall had... Uh, great and was great and high, had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels, the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So 12 gates. On the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Back in Ezekiel, chapter 48, 31, Ezekiel had a vision of this city. He said, the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates on the north side, 
uh, the gate of Reuben and Judah and Levi. On the east 